Unda or The Bride of the Sea by Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Respectfully dedicated with permission to Maurice Wintermo, Esquire. A dull, dark, drear, dactylic delirium in sixteen silly, senseless, sickly stanzas. Egg Oaks Lunum Cano. Mevius Bevianus. Black loom the crags of the uplands behind me. Dark are the sands of the far-stretching shore. Dim are the pathways and rocks that remind me, sadly of years in the lost nevermore. Soft laps the ocean on wave-polished boulder. Sweet is the sound and familiar to me. Here, with her head gently bent to my shoulder, walked I with Unda, the bride of the sea. Bright was the morn of my youth when I met her, sweet as the breeze that blew in o'er the brine. Swift was I captured in love's strongest fetter, glad to be hers and she glad to be mine. Never a question asked I where she wandered, never a question asked she of my birth. Happy as children we thought not nor pondered, glad with the bounty of ocean and earth. Once when the moonlight played soft mid the billows, high on the cliff o'er the waters we stood, bound was her hair with a garland of willows, plucked by the fount in the bird-haunted wood. Strangely she gazed on the surges beneath her, charmed by the sound or entranced by the light. Then did the waves a wild aspect bequeath her, stern as the ocean and weird as the night. Coldly she left me, astonished and weeping, standing alone mid the regions she blessed, down ever downward, half gliding, half creeping, stole the sweet Unda in oceanward quest. Calm grew the sea, and tumultuous beating, turned to a ripple as Unda the fair, trod the wet sands in affectionate greeting, beckoned to me, and no longer was there. Long did I pace by the banks where she vanished, High climbed the moon and descended again. Gray broke the dawn till the sad night was banished. Still act my soul with its infinite pain. All the wide world have I searched for my darling. Scoured the far deserts and sailed distant seas. Once on the wave, while the tempest was snarling, flashed a fair face that brought quiet and ease. Ever in restlessness onward I stumble. Seeking and pining, scarce heeding my way. Now have I strayed where the wide waters rumble. Back to the scene of the lost yesterday. Lo, the red moon from the ocean's low hazes. Rises in ominous grandeur to view. Strange is its face as my tortured eye gazes. O'er the vast reaches of sparkle and blue. Straight from the moon to the shore where I'm sighing grows a bright bridge made of wavelets and beams. Frail may it be, yet how simple the trying, wandering from earth to the orb of sweet dreams. What is yon face in the moonlight appearing? Have I at last found the maiden that fled? Out on the beam bridge, my footsteps are nearing. Her whose sweet beckoning hastens my tread. Currents surround me and drowsily swaying, Far on the moon path I seek the sweet face. Eagerly hasting, half panting, half praying, forward I reach for the vision of grace. Murmuring waters about me are closing. Soft the sweet vision advances to me. Done are my trials, my heart is reposing. Safe with my Unda, the bride of the sea. Epilogue. As the rash fool a prey of Unda's art. Drown through the passion of his fevered heart. So are our youth inflamed by tempters fair, bereft of reason and the manly air. How sad the sight of Strephon's virile grace. Turn to confusion at his Chloe's face. And ear Pelides, dear to Grecian eyes, sulking for loss of his thrice cherished prize. Brothers attend, if cares too sharply vex, 
gain rest by shunning the destructive sex.